Good morning, guys. So I hope you enjoyed our mystery continent, yes, continent yesterday of, what did we have? That's right, we talked about Europe and we read the story, The English Cinder Lad, which was very different from Soot Face. So today we're gonna figure out what mystery continent we're gonna work on today, are you ready? So I have my mystery bag. All right, the first thing I have, so I have some bright red and gold fabric. Hmm. I also have some bright colored fabric. And then the last one, which might give it away, I have this very pretty paper fan. Hmm. I wonder where I might see these things at. On which continent? Let's see. Do you think you have a guess? Asia. So we're going to be talking about Asia today. And those are some things that you might find in Asia. Especially Asia has the country of China. And the color red in the country of China actually is a symbol of um, good luck. And so you'll see a lot of things that are red. And then also they use those paper fans that they like to use and actually paper umbrellas too that help keep the sun off of them. So Asia is the largest continent in the world and it's the largest in both size and population. So that means that it's really big, but it also has a lot of people on it. It includes 48 different countries. The highest mountain in the whole world, Mount Everest, is in Asia. It's also home to the Great Wall of China. So if you might have seen like videos online or something of the very long old wall that goes through China, that's it's in Asia. And some of the most endangered animals on the planet live there. So remember, endangered means there's not very many left. And so tigers, giant pandas, and snow leopards all live in Asia. And a lot of times when people think about Asia, they think about the panda because it's the only place in the world that the panda can live. And so our story for Asia is Panderella. So while we're reading Panderella, what I want you to do is I want you to think about how is this story different or the same as some of the other stories we've read, okay? And then you're also gonna think about those words that you can use to describe the character. How could you describe um, Panderella? Now, since Panderella is a panda, you might be able to describe her a little bit differently than we had, were able to describe the Irish cinder lad or soot face, because we might be able to call her furry since she has fur and things like that. So here we go, Panderella. And this is giving us just the characters so we know who they're gonna be at the beginning of the book. It says we're gonna have Panderella, and if you notice, her name is in a different color. That's because she's the main character. We're gonna have the stepmother and two stepsisters, the furry godmother. How is that different than the other? That's right, the other one said fairy, but it's furry because she's a panda. Okay, we have the prince and we have the messenger. All right, once upon a time, there lived a beautiful panda called Panderella. She lived with her stepmother and two stepsisters. They were very unkind and made her do all the work in the house. So if you look at the back of the story, Panderella, you can see some things that you might find actually in China. You can see, oh, there's that paper fan, just like I had in the bag. You can see they're wearing these special kinds of robes in the way that they dress. And then you can also, if you look very carefully, they have um, special windows that are almost made out of paper. So it lets some of the light in, but not all the light. Do we remember what that's called? If some light can come in, but not all? That's right, they're transparent, very. Sorry, translucent. Transparent would be the regular glass. One day, a messenger brought an invitation from the royal palace. The prince had invited them all to a ball. But the stepsisters told Panderella she could not go. Panderella's stepmother and stepsisters got dressed and went to the ball. When they got up, Panderella sat down and began to cry. Suddenly, there was a flash of light and her furry godmother appeared. Don't cry, Panderella, said the furry godmother. You shall go to the ball. She waved her magic wand and suddenly Panderella was wearing a beautiful dress.
The furry godmother waved her wand again, and a carriage and horses appeared. They were ready to take Cinderella to the ball. Make sure you come home before the st clock strikes midnight, she warned Panderella. When Panderella got to the ball, the prince couldn't take his eyes off of her. They danced together for hours. Suddenly, the clock began to chime midnight. The magic was about to wear off. So you can see that the special robes they're wearing, and they also have special headdresses. <gasps> Panderella ran as fast as she could, but as she ran, one of her glass slippers fell to the ground. The prince picked up the slipper. He didn't know who Panderella was, but he knew the slipper would fit her. He decided to go look for her. Before long, the prince's shirt search took him to Panderella's house. Her stepsisters tried to cram their paws into the slipper, but they were the wrong shape. So remember in the other story, it was the wrong size. This time it's the shape since the paw instead of a foot. They, then the prince spotted Panderella. He asked her to try the slipper on and it fit perfectly. The prince and Panderella went to the palace where they were married. Panderella never had to work for her stepsisters again, and she lived happily ever after. All right, guys, so that was our story, Panderella. So what you're going to do now is you're going to connect to Seesaw, and you are going to be telling me what's different in this story from the other stories. And then how can you describe Panderella? What are some words that you can use that might be different than the regular Cinderella or Sootface or even the Cinderlad? All right. Thanks for listening, guys.